Okay, shalom, shalom. Kom yasha alam. Kuholim la. Yahu. Bahashim Yahushai. Bahashim Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who were well and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to other Akim and Akwaf. That's all here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Nawaf just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, just wanted to touch on this quick little article here. I got like 12% on my phone, so I'm going to try and make this uh, quick. Uh, but as you can see, this young lady right here, you know, she had a couple of surgeries. And this is what she used to look like right here. Let me see. No, it's locked. This is what she used to look like. Not a bad looking chick, you know. But tried to commit um, suicide. It says, woman who survived suicide attempt becomes voice for mental illness. Uh, and, it, and the story is pretty bugged out, you know. It says, uh, it was my big, it was the biggest explosion I've ever felt in my life. Jasmine Walton says, recalling the night she fired a handgun under her chin. Before January 8th, 2023, the 23-year-old content creator lived with undiagnosed schizophrenia, which haunted her daily life. She shot through her lip, teeth, and nose, but incredibly it didn't, didn't pass out, but was in a coma for two weeks following the two life-saving operations. Now she openly shared her battle on social media in a bid to inspire others to seek help. Speaking of the night she tried to take her own life, she recalls, I looked in the mirror. And saw that there was nothing except blood. I was just burning so bad. And I was trying to talk. And was illiterate. And couldn't get words out. I didn't have a chin. I didn't have a lip. I didn't have teeth. Everything got blown out. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. She definitely looked way different. That's for sure. For a Daytona Beach native, her illness was represented represented by an, ima by an imagined but very real feeling form-shifting man called the enemy. The tall white man with black hair had made appearances throughout her entire life but grew more apparent in her early adulthood. She imagined he was whispering to her about, um, you know, taking her own, you know, the, the sewer. The enemy said that it had to it had to happen. That is that it was a part of whatever plan that he installed for my life. And he was just putting false ideas in my head that were frightening and they just wouldn't stop. It just left me hopeless, and it left left me scared for my life. Jasmine was living with her ex-boyfriend when she tried to take her own um, life and was struggling to cope with the breakup. Not having him in my life romantically kind of put me in a spot where I was just broken and sad, she says. My suicide attempt definitely was not because of my relationship. It was more so because of my schizophrenia and psychosis. Eventually, the Daytona Beach native became estranged from her family due to increasingly intense paranoia and delusions. I sort of blamed them for it. I knew that was wrong, and I was saddened. I was so saddened after the fact that I knew it wasn't them, that I knew that it was just the enemy the whole time. Her ex kept a handgun in the apartment, and Jasmine recalls contemplating the idea of taking her, you know, doing herself in for weeks in advance i would hold the, the handgun to my chin or my head and say okay today's the day today's okay to, so today's going to be the day and i would then be like no not today yeah you can clearly see yeah she, she yeah she knocked her whole chin out of her you know that, that's crazy though but hey it says back on the 8th of january around 9 30 p.m her ex was watching basketball on TV. Jasmine walked up to the master bedroom, grabbed the 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 um the, the gun from the closet. I was pacing for quite some time before actually pulling my trigger. She recalls, I just kept trying to work myself up to doing it. I said, I can't live a life where I hear I hear a voice hear a voice that I know is the enemy, who know has this plan to only destroy my life. I just couldn't. I know there is hell, and I know there is some sort of peace in heaven. So see, no, there's there's no such thing as hell. That's not in the scriptures. Your spirit goes back to the spirit world. Um, she says, and it's what I was craving. 
that's what I was chasing. So she really, she wanted that peace. Now the peace, you know, that the scriptures, you know, she, that she's speaking of, that's actually in the scriptures, man. So let's get, um, because the apostle um, Gabar, he was just going into that hell doctrine again. That's been a thing, ongoing thing with some of these, these camps. It was um, Captain Cesariac. I think he was speaking to a young lady that actually done this to herself. You know what I'm saying? Committed, you know, this act of taking their, you know, and she was asking him, you know, did my sister go to hell or heaven? And he wasn't answering her properly, man. He didn't get straight to the point and tell her that there's no hell. There's no such thing as hell. Your spirit goes back to the Lord that gave it. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. See, your spirit goes back to the Lord. So she did have it right and wanting that peace or, you know what I'm saying, as far as like peace of returning to the heavens, so to speak. But, you know, that burning place underground called hell, that's not scriptural. Hell is a condition. She was already going through hell. Let me grab one more or two. Let me see. Salakia, bear with me real fast. Now, this is a situation with Job. Job chapter 3 and verse 11. And he's going to explain what happens in the heavens, so to speak. Verse 11, Job 3 and 11. Why did I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I, I should, should suck? For now should I have have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth. Which built desolate places for themselves. Or with princes that had gold. Or filled their houses with silver. Or as in hidden untimely birth. I had not been. As infants which never saw light. There. See here's the point. There the wicked cease from troubling. So they're there. Even the wicked are there. And there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. See that? The small and great are there. And the servant is free from his master. See that? So that's, you know, hey. That, that, that's, that's, that's what it is. You, you, you know, your spirit returns back to the Lord. They gave it. But there's this false sense of... um. There being this burning place on the ground with some, you know, so-called white guy. He got on the red spandex suit. You know, he got the little gold tee, little two horns on the top of his head. He's got that little tripod or that, that, that scepter or that pitchfork, what they call it or whatever. And he's just screaming at people, you know, and there's this burning lake, you know, under the earth. And that's not scriptural, man. That's not in the Bible. The word hell just goes off into a grave or a pit. You know, now, when you're buried in a hole, that's that's called a hell as well. But there's also a condition of hell. Like what she was going through, That's that was actual hell what she was going through. You know, hearing those voices and things of that nature. Now, matter of fact, you know what? Let's, let me see something real quick. Bear with me on this. Let's get this Matthew chapter 4 to start at verse 23. And Yahweh went out went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. See torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. So it would take the Lord to heal, you know, um, um, that, that lady, if she, you know, and she, she appears to be an Israelite. She might be an Israelite. She may not be, but it would take Yahweh. That's Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai to actually heal her. And that's the true name of our savior is Yahweh Shai. It's not Jesus. And if she was calling on the name of Jesus, that's probably more than likely the reason why some damn demons is on her to begin with. Because that word Jesus, man, that, that that's not the Lord's name. That is actually a transliteration of the Lord's name. As you can see right here, it's going to it real fast. See where it says um, Jesus right here, G2424. But actually in the Greek, it would have been Jesus with an I. Because there's no letter J in Hebrew. And there was no actual letter J back then. 
So his name is not Jesus. And you have a lot of people that say, well, it doesn't matter what you call him. Today his name is Jesus because that's his name in English. But that's not the name that the angel Gabriel gave to, to give him. His name is Yahweh Shai. Because see, when you go into it, it's going to see it gives you the biblical Hebrew name. Here's the he Hebrew origin right here. We're right here where it says root, word, etymology, right here. So when you go into H3091, it actually gives you his Hebrew name, which should have been the real translation to begin with. Which they would say Joshua, but it's actually Yahawashai. Now they have Yehushua, Yehushua, but there's no letter J in the Hebrew alphabet. There's no letter E. There's no letter O. There's no letter U. And there's no letter V. So now right here, if you, if you notice these little dots right here where I just highlighted, those little dots and dashes, those are called vowel points. The so-called white man done that. Without those vowel points, you wouldn't have those, those, those sounds of E, O, U, V, so on and so forth. It would just be Ya, Ha, Wa, Shai, which means Ya meaning he, Ha, Wa, Shai meaning savior or deliverer. And it's saying with the father's name. So if you go into, let's say the father's name, let's just put in Lord real quick. When you see the word Lord or the name Lord in all caps like this right here, which is first mentioned in um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. When you see that in all caps, let's get to it. H3068. See? Now, once you do the vowel point thing, if you notice right here. They, they saying Jehovah, but it's Yahweh. See? When you go to H1961. See? You got these vowel points right here, which I just highlighted. All that shit that's underneath, though, those are vowel points. The Lord's name is Yahweh, meaning he. Yah meaning he. Hawa meaning exists. See, it says right here to become, to be, to become, come to pass, exist. That's what the Lord's name means. So the Father's name is Yahweh, and the and the true name of the Son is Yahweh Shai. So I just wanted to just touch on that and bring that out real quick because these particular um you know these 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 spirits exist, man, because the Lord cast them out of people. We just um read that in Matthew chapter um that, that um the one in Matthew we just read about the him you know delivering the people from these sicknesses, diseases, um demons devils lunatics you know they was going through a lot of people a lot of people was going through a lot of shit you even had the man that was um he was chained and i think his name was legion matter of fact let's see salakia he had he had a lot of um things going on with him too uh let's get the account in mark right here uh let's start at verse We probably got to start from the top. Let's start from verse 1. Mark ver um, chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the co the country of Gardarines. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, no not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked off, had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. So he was so damn strong off them demons, all them demons that was on him, that he was breaking shit like that, man. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. See, what did that young lady say? She was like that had been with her since she was a child, basically. You know, she, she couldn't shake it. But when he saw Yahweh Shai afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yahweh Shai, thou son of the Most High? God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So Yahweh Shai, you know, cleanse him of that spirit, man. And matter of fact, it wasn't just one spirit because it goes on to say, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered it saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. 
So he had many um um demons on him. And when you let me see, I never looked up this word legion, but it it's a pretty large number, really. G thirty oh three. Legion, a body of soldiers whose numbers differed in different times, and in the time of Augustus seems to have consisted of 6,826 men, 6,100 foot soldiers, and 726 horsemen. So we're talking about like 7,000 people, 7,000 um, demons is on this man. And, that, um, you know, seven goes into completion. But anyway, let's see what else we got in here. Salakia for that. I didn't mean it, um, you know. But hey, that's the spirit, man. We got to bring it out. Um, she says, again, she says, I know there's a hell. Of course, we just, you know, went off into there's not a hell. And I know there's some sort of peace in heaven. We did read in Job that, yes, that there's peace in heaven. And because you're before the Lord, you know what I'm saying? You're just pretty much, you're, you're at rest. It actually said that the, the wicked and the righteous are there. And it's what I was craving. That's what I was chasing. Jasmine pulled the barrel. She pushed she pushed the barrel up against her chin. I was slowly pulling the trigger and I, and I and I didn't fully press it down, she recalls. I was just slowly pulling it and I was slowly pressing it and it ended up going off. It was like an explosion happened right in my body, right in my room. But it was right in, in front of my body. I was right on my bed. On it was right on my head, Slakia. The bullet kind of ricocheted. And it kicked back out. The kick was extreme. And so when it was under my chin, it kicked out frontward. And the shell was lodged in my nose. The bullet ricocheted out of, out through my bottom lip and then it then into the ceiling. I remember hearing screams. And then Aiden ran into the room and pulled me to the ground. She shares. I laid there for a couple of seconds, breathing really heavily. So, yeah, she went from, you know, hey, that, all that little pretty shit, that shit don't make no difference, man. Miraculously, Jasmine says she immediately stood up. I was like, okay, I can stand. And I walked to try and get out of the room and our bathroom door was open. So I looked in the mirror while Jasmine stared at the blood and missing parts of her face, which she called gruesome and frightening. Aiden dialed 911. I was conscious during the entire thing. She recalls, I walked to the kitchen. And grabbed a cup of water, but when I attempted to drink the water, it just fell straight through because nothing was there to catch the water down my throat. It was the most chilling night of my life. I just remember saying I need help. I sat on the curb, and they picked me up and put me in the ambulance. The burning wouldn't stop. Every area that was open to the air was just burning so bad. Medics rushed to, rushed to assess her condition as she pleaded for help. I remember an EMT. Holding a flashlight, inspecting the damage to my face, the extent of her injuries required two life-saving surgeries during the during which she flatlined twice. They said I didn't have a heartbeat for a while. Aiden later told me the amount of blood in the room was insane. There were even teeth on the floor, and a piece of my nose had fallen off. After being revived, her fight for life continued in the hospital where she was placed in a medically induced coma for two weeks. When she woke up, the first thing she saw was her family. I remember seeing my mom, dad, brothers, and sisters. My mom said, we love you, baby girl, and my brother grabbed my hand. Okay, so you see the point there, man. And, you know, she, now she's an influencer. This is her right here. Well, she was an influencer to begin with. So now she's got 260,000 um, followers, and she pretty much talks to people about mental mental health and um, issues and shit like that, so... Of course, you know, hey, she's out here like, hey, she's probably bigger than she ever was before, right? She says, I try to be a positive influence for people of all ages. I want them to know they're not alone, that there's someone who understands. I try to be a light that the world needs. And she says she can't talk or eat as well as she used to. Um, things just aren't the same. Of course, they're not. You know, of course, she goes off into, you know, people that are struggling and, you know, talking about that enemy or whatever. But she's trying to pretty much overall live. I didn't get into any of the comments. But, I mean, you know, you could pretty much about imagine what those are. But there she go, man. I was, you know, they put her back together a little bit, though. But see, let's get another scripture. You you can't, hey, the Lord is the one that wounds and the one that heals. 
He's the one that determines life and death. You can't just do it. Though the Lord did create spirits for vengeance. Deuteronomy 32 and 39 right here. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the Lord wounded her and done this to her. See, the Lord wounded her and done this. He done that to her. And then he healed her. And, and these are the end results. Of the healing process right there. And and, and crazy man. Because she went from, from this. To this. So the Lord. Hey man it's cold man. That's why the scripture talks about. Um, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Always just find these stories. Uh, you know fascinating man. If you notice, I do quite a bit of lessons on stuff like this, but, you know, we must repetitively teach that the Lord is, is nothing to be played with, man. Um, Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God because he has the power to do this. Let's get this real quick. I'm going to the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28. And it says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So that, that was a spirit of vengeance on her. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So you ask spirits of vengeance, man, that's out here. Yeah, man, scary, man. Got 7%. Let me get, let me get one more. Because man's goings of the Lord. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's really because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's, it's hard to imagine. What, how the Lord really gets down, but I mean, hey, he gets down, man. <laughs> that's all that. That's all you need to know. He, he's, you know, you're not gonna comprehend it all. You're just not gonna get it all. But this is um, Exodus four and eleven, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Now this is when the Lord was talking to Moses, um, and uh, um, you know, just before he was going, you know, before uh pharaoh in egypt you know to speak but he was talking about how you know his speech wasn't eloquent or you know but anyway it says exodus 4 and 11 and the lord said unto him who hath made man's mouth or who maketh the dumb or death or the seeing or the blind have not i the lord see that that lets you know that the lord he may, he creates blind people he creates dumb people deaf people every situation that people you know Esau, the so-called white man, he'll just tell you that, oh, you got, you have an ailment or, or, you know, or that's a sickness and he'll give you some, you know, one of his pills, you know, or a bottle of them shits, you know, two, three bottles of them actually, you know, five, six bottles. <laughs> and he'll tell you to take them pills. And she could have been on some medication. That could have been what was going on with her ass all along. It didn't say anything about anything like that, but let's get this one too. We got a couple of percentages on the, on the battery life there. This is Revelation 4 and 11. Thou art worthy, O Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. See? Because you have people out here, they don't believe that the Lord created um, evil. They don't believe that the Lord created wicked wickedness. The Lord created everything. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of um, Christians. This is Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? Can't get around it. There's too many precepts on it. But a lot of Christians, they don't want to accept that because they've been told so long that the Lord loves everything. And that's all he does is love. They, they, they've never heard that he hates. 
Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? See? The Lord, you know, is all in action on that one. Let's get this one too. Psalms 5 and 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So that's a clear cut to these Christians talking about how the Lord loves everything. He loves everybody. It says he hates the workers of iniquity. The worker is the person. The iniquity is the sin. You know, so, you know, and, and it's, it's other scriptures on that. It's all kinds of scriptures on that. But, you know, hey, the Lord is in control of all things, man. The Lord hit her off, took that beauty away because she could have been proud. Because she's not, like I said, you know, generally when women look like this. When women look like this right here, that, that's her typical, I'm a beautiful woman look, right? Because she, she's not a bad looking lady. You know, she's not bad looking at all. You know what I'm saying? You know, she could easily grow her hair and change it all kinds of colors and twist it up and do curls and, you know, put on all kinds of makeup, some damn eyelashes, you know, and, you know, and just, you know, throwing that outfit and she's, she's a damn symbol. <laughs> You know, so she could have she could have been, you know, one of those people that, are, you know, were, was prideful. Because she did say that she always considered herself to be beautiful. I didn't read that part, but I remember reading it when I first read it at first. So just never know, man. The Lord, hey, he'll knock you off that little high horse, man. Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride go up before destruction and then halt to spirit before a fall. Because they never did say she, she was still living with her ex-boyfriend. Claiming that, you know, you know, as if they wasn't together, but they were still living together. So what was the reason? You know what I'm saying? For that. You know. They didn't get all off into that. But anyway, you know, just wanted to just point out the fact that, yeah, these, yeah, they, they, these damn spirits are real because the Lord created them. He created them on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Because matter of fact, let me get just one more. We got time before this thing go off on me. I got 6%. I think we good. Uh, no, nope, not Genesis. Um, what is it? Oh, second, first Kings 22. Let's start at verse 19. And you'll see that the Lord, he deals with these, you know, spirits on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side because he created the wicked and he created good. First Kings 22 and 19. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. See, so the Lord created left handed spirits and he created right handed spirits. Verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Galead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So if you read this in the NLT, it'll basically read like who will go up and persuade Ahab to be killed. So the Lord is setting this guy up. So we know that it's the Lord that does these things. Verse 21, 1 Kings 22 and 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Yeah, I'm about to, so like it's getting dark on here. I got 5%. It's about to die, but we'll get there. Let me just finish it up. Verse 21 again. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? So the Lord is like, how you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and, pre and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So this was the same situation pretty much overall with her. <laughs> that that's that she said that it was a so-called white man with black hair that kept speaking to her. That was a spirit of vengeance, man. You know what I'm saying? That the Lord has sent to her, like probably the same counsel. What, what you're going to do? How you going to do it? Well, I'll just go and just whisper in her ear to just, you know, do this to herself. Who's going to go and, and stop um, um, such and such for standing in that damn mirror all the time, talking about how beautiful she is with all that fucking pride? That's just me speaking as a man. I'm not saying that's actually what happened. But that could have been, you know, a scenario as to what had happened. And one of the spirits could have been like, well, Lord, I got it. I know what to do. Wherewith, <laughs> Lord, like, how you going to do it? I'm going, I'm just going to, you know. But she was saying that, that that spirit was pretty, she was saying that all her life, though, from a little child. So 
you know, and there's a such thing as reincarnation as well. She could have been a very wicked ass woman in her past life. You know, so I just wanted to just, um, you know, kind of touch on this. I found that to be a very, very interesting story once I started reading through it. And it's, you know, so many precepts. OK, I had to plug in so many precepts was coming through like I'm you know, like, you know, just by the spirit. I got to do something. But, hey, if you feeling any anxiety or any, you know, anything going on like that with you, man, you need to be praying to Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai. Don't let those demons press on you. Scriptures actually talks about that as well. Don't get down on yourself. You get to getting down on yourself and you get to doubting and, and you know. You know, you, you'll give those spirits an, an out. You'll give them an inside. Um, It's like you cracking the door. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. It's like, and then eventually, you know, you swinging the door open and then now all of a sudden they in there jumping on your damn couch. You know? They turning on your TV, watching all manner of shit. You know? Motherfuckers bouncing all off the counter, eating all your food. You know, I'm just saying in the spirit, you know, hey, these damn demons is real. These spirits are real, man. <laughs> And also, since I got the phone charged up, I'm thinking about this one more. Let's get one more in the apocrypha to show you that the Lord deals with um, both sides of things. Because he created all things, you know what I'm saying? But he created them all in twos. I may have to grab another one more precept after this one too to go just a little further into it. Ecclesiastes 33 and 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him, to render to them as like the best. Now this is Ecclesiastes 33, it's also known as the Book of Sirach in the 1611 King James Bible. If you don't have that app downloaded, get you a 1611 King James Bible with the Apocrypha in it, because you need those extra books that the so-called white man took out. This is the original canon, the original Bible. You can go and buy one, you know, at your Bible store or bookstore or Borders books or maybe Amazon you can actually get a physical copy but this is one that I downloaded in the Play Store for free right but this book is called Ecclesiasticus now you have a book called Ecclesiastes and you know like if you had a regular Bible with the 66 books you have a Ecclesiastes but this is Ecclesiasticus written by the same author um, and it's also called the Book of Sirach but this is um, chapter 33 and verse 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it as his pleasure, at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him, to render to them as like them best. So this is the Lord, and, and the Lord is that potter, and, that, and you are the clay. He created everybody just like how he wanted, it, wanted them to be created. That's why when I read Exodus 4 and 11, and it talks about who made the dumb or who made the blind, you know, it's clearly the Lord. He he created them just like how he wanted them to be. There's nothing they can do about it. Verse 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. See that? So the Lord created everything in twos. You can't have slow without fast or cold without hot, up without down birth without death it would be an abomination to the lord which is in um proverbs 11 because the lord is a perfect balance to not you know to have one without the other it, it would be an, uh, an abomination to the lord proverbs 11 and 1 a false balance is is an abomination to the lord but a just weight is his delight see so you can't have um one without the other you know um Normally, I kind of go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter three and you'll kind of get some of those two and twos, you know, verse one, it says to everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. That's a two and two. You can't have being born without dying, um, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. So, you know, that's a two and two a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Those are all pretty much two and twos, you know. It, there's a complete balance to the Lord, man. You can't have one without the other. And that's the way that the Lord created it. So he created evil spirits and he created um, spirits that do good, you know. So, hey, man, this is who we're dealing with here. <laughs> hey, you dealing with...
dealing with something serious, man. Like for real, man. The Lord is no joke whatsoever, man. Uh, let's see. One more. I think it's in Isaiah. Yep, it was. Uh, Isaiah 55 and 8 and 55 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you're not going to, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're thankful for what the Lord shows us and what he gives us through, you know, um, our teachers and stuff like that. But even our teachers, man, they know they, they're not going to, you know, you, you're not on a level with the Lord, man. For some of this stuff, you'll be thinking, you'll blow your mind, man, trying to think like, well, why is this and why is that? And where did he come from? You know, like that should have bleed, you know. Ain't no no use in even going that far with your thinking, man. Don't 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 mess yourself up. <laughs> you know, just stick to the basics, man. But his ways are way higher than what we cause we can't fathom, you know, why he does certain things, you know what I'm saying, and the ripple effects of it. And going back to the beginning of time before everything was created and thought out, you know, and thought through, you know, like, you know, the Lord is just incredibly powerful. We're talking about somebody that created the sun, man. That son boy get out there, man, and roast your ass, you know. <laughs> and if you 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 out there in it just one millisecond too long, and you ain't got no water or whatever, man, it'll, it'll knock you off from way up in the skies as far as he he created it to be, you know. But anyway, man, I'm gonna end out there. I pray that this lesson was edifying. With that, form y'all, Shala and a Bible boy.